All right, welcome to the panel discussion around the SecOps cloud platform and how this approach brings value to those building security products and services. My name is Ros Haliluk and I am a head of product here at Lima Charlie <laughs> and I will be moderating this discussion. With us today, Eric Capuano, CTO and founder of Recon InfoSec and Amanda Berlin, lead incident detection engineer at Blumira. Thank you so much for joining us as we discuss the value of the SecOps cloud platform for those building security products and services. Let's start by talking about problems. Uh, you're both accomplished technologists. What are some of the challenges that builders of security products and services face <laughs> when they are looking for technologies to design their offerings on top of? Okay. I can share a little bit about, you know, some of the problems that we faced, you know, um, recon is kind of unique in that, um, for, for the first several years of our, you know, sort of building, uh, process, we relied heavily on, on DIY approach, you know, uh, build, maintaining our own infrastructure, leveraging open source, uh, tools and platforms, which, which was, was full of wins for us, by the way. Uh, but it comes with a hidden cost. It's a hidden cost of a lot of complexity, a lot of, uh, troubleshooting, you know, a lot of. Um, you know, building the integrations yourself and, and also then troubleshooting these things when they inevitably uh, fail. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very complex, but, you know, obviously financially rewarding approach to take, but it, it does require just a lot more kind of hair pulling and, and, and you know, head banging to, to kind of keep that solution um, humming along. And that, that doesn't even, that doesn't even start to, 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 to weigh in on all the other complexities of, of running, for instance, a security operations business, right? So you, you've got more important fires to, 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 to worry about, like actual customer, you know, security incidents and things of that nature. So um, a, a huge kind of evolution in that journey for us was, was identifying a, a, a service level sort of platform that we could offload all of that complex infrastructure, log ingestion, uh, threat detection engines and all that stuff. Uh, somewhere else that that you know we don't have to worry about the underpinning kind of technology as much anymore. We can focus a lot more on bringing the fight to the back. Yeah, to totally agree. <laughs> um, uh, just just around you know there are there are always going to be multiple options to you know solve the same kind of problem, right? But when you find yourself, oh, all right, we're going to start. We we are starting to uh, our business, and we know we want to do the thing that we want to do. And to do that, we have to, we're going to use these open source products, right? So you, you start with the free, the open source, whatever. Um, and then you get a little ways down the road and find out those limitations. And those limitations come in with that complexity, right? Because you want things um, a certain way for your customers, right? Whether you're trying to make things quicker or easier or whatever for, for your end user, your customer, that puts a whole lot of complexity back on you. Right. And then you end up building more integrations, more um, uh, fixes, more things around this this free service just to manage it. So at that point, now you are doing your main job of, of providing this product. But now you have all of these other side side things that you're <laughs> also trying to manage and and to troubleshoot and deploy and make sure there's guidance around. Then it's just like, uh, you know, stacking, stacking, stacking more, more technologies and stuff on top. So yeah, off, offloading some of those things to a, to an open service, um, uh, that kind yeah. of, it's like, oh my gosh, just gonna fix all the problems that we had in this area. And, you know, an, another another major pain point that you feel whenever you're trying to cobble together your own sort of approach to this is um, where, you, where you start to feel the most pain is when you start to scale it, right? Like you, you might you might build and deploy something that, that works, right? A, a general kind of monolithic sort of infrastructure approach using open services or, or, or um, applications. Um, and then you start to encounter these problems where, okay, we've got this potential customer. They're massive. And now we're worried about signing them on, like, which you, you wouldn't think in a million years that as a, as someone running a business, you'd be worried about taking on new, big, awesome customers. But when you're on this sort of monolithic, uh, this infrastructure that now becomes a concern. If we take these, if we take this customer off, is it going to break our infrastructure? 
And so moving to an, a, an open, infinitely scalable sort of cloud solution, right, that, that really has, I mean, you know, let's be honest, you know, has no limits, but that's everything has limits. But, but the cloud, that, you know, using kind of the, the on-demand, infinitely scalable sort of capabilities that Lima Charlie brings, it's the last thing I think about now. I don't worry about the size of a customer I bring. Oh, like bring it. You know, it could be 15 times, you know, the, the largest customer we have. No, no concerns at all. Um, it doesn't it doesn't change the math for us. Right. And, and knowing that we've got a fixed cost for that as well is huge, because another issue that we used to encounter um, on our kind of traditional infrastructure was it was not as, as it was more of a dynamic cost on a customer basis. Right. Some customers cost more than others. And it was it was a really complicated to try to figure out, you know, what our margins are and, and, and are we are we delivering this service in an affordable way or I'm sorry, in a profitable way so that we can continue paying our analysts and keeping our servers running. Right. And so now with that fixed cost, all of that, that scale of concern and profitability, it's 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 a thing of the past. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about just scaling the technology. Right. You have to worry about scaling the support, the documentation. That's right the edge cases the cost yeah everything yeah. it's not just a, a one time oh we can scale this one is it, <laughs> exactly right is it fair to say going. that by abstracting the hard part of managing the infrastructure you are able to focus on your own uh, core value proposition yeah. more would that yeah would that be the right way <laughs> it's, russ it's it's more than fair to say it that ought to be your mission statement uh, because because that's exactly what happened for us, right? Um, we we went from spending probably thirty to forty to fifty hours a week just maintaining underlying infrastructure. It was a it was a massive undertaking, um, and now all of that time's freed up. And, and what's really cool is the resources that we were using to maintain all that monolithic infrastructure. We've just simply shifted into building and creating new and awesome and exciting things customer facing things like front end applications and and more uh, 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 feature request ingestion from our customers on new and interesting things they'd like to do we didn't have time for those things before so we we stagnated on the new innovations because we were just constantly just focusing on keeping the the, the monolithic sort of enterprise infrastructure alive and, and happy so it, 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 it's it's an understatement to say that it has freed us up to focus on the things that we're more passionate about that are differentiators for us that make our customers happy. Nice. Yeah, and uh, somewhat related. Um, what what I found interesting was you know we were doing things a certain way and, and trying to scale and you know that was that was kind of a uh, a pain point once you once you start like uh, onboarding a lot of customers. Um, when we did start using Lima Charlie, we had to think of how to ingest data a different way, which is going to end up uh, changing the way how we do it overall, right? So it's not, it wasn't just a, uh, a shoehorn, let's, let's replace one thing for another. It's a, oh my gosh, this actually makes the, the process that we're doing internally for our customers ultimately better. And, and Ross, I want to add one thing to that because it, it's 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 one thing to say that it freed us up to do other more exciting things, but I, I should also give additional credit to say that one of the most exciting things about our adoption of Lima Charlie was the new capabilities. Right, there were things that we couldn't do, even if we had the time to do them. We didn't have the the technology to to do it. Right, you know things like on demand hunts, on demand yard ER scanning based on detections, and like. You know, the list goes on. There were so many things that the sensor uh, uh, brought to the table for us that, that were just not even, they were daydreams, you know, before. And so it's it's kind of a twofold issue. We have more time to do more of the exciting things, and we have more exciting things to kind of tackle. Uh, and that's that's super cool. Awesome. Uh, I'm curious, since since you, you've kind of started touching on some of the ways in which you use the, the SecOps Cloud Platform uh, for your use cases, like, what are some of the, like, would you be able to discuss a specific success story uh, in terms of, like, how, how you've done it or maybe what capabilities you've implemented and, and how did that go for you? I, I can go, sure. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I'm not sure how many people listening uh, know about this, but they're been uh, recently a lot of exchange vulnerabilities 
um, and other like web server related vulnerabilities that have been taking a huge hit on uh, not only small and medium businesses, but lots and lots of different organizations. Um, there's a Moot vulnerability that was uh, that came out not too long ago. All of the Exchange stuff. There were some other like um, phone application vulnerabilities that were all web based. Um, the one thing that I, I enjoy that we've deployed so far is the ability to, based on our detections of Lumira, to automatically isolate something and prevent further, um, uh, compromise, right? So one of those things is, um, uh, a file being written to a device that, you know, ended up compromising an entire, uh, application server that was on the internet. Uh, and the ability to automatically isolate that, and it just kind of cuts off an attacker, uh, at least from that host, right? <laughs> yeah, so so my example would actually be similar in a lot of ways to Amanda's. Um, so it, it's kind of twofold. The, 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 the two really exciting capabilities that we've had that have been very useful to us is, one, the retrospective capability of being able to run a hunt against a year's worth of telemetry of a customer environment, right? Like, so when, when the IOCs come out, we can we can go back and see you know twelve months right of history of of any of those IOCs being present in the environment. But here's where it was a major game changer for us in a recent uh, ransomware uh, case. We were working in IR for a company we had just begun our relationship with, and uh, we we've come in and you know generally in a, in a ransomware situation, especially for uh, an IR person, you're coming in after the damage is done. You know the the things have been blown up and it's all over, and I, you're just kind of doing a post mortem and trying to understand. Re- right to give them some mitigating you know steps that they can take to prevent it from happening again um we got involved in this uh ransomware event just in time where th- there was a system that was impacted um and so what we did was we rapidly deployed the the edr agent and we we extracted all the iocs everything that we could learn about the system that was impacted to understand you know the, the malware they were using the c2 they were using the 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 the, the uh the persistence mechanism and all that and with the speed of limit, Charlie, we can just immediately craft those in the DNR rules that would, if it if, if it observes any of this activity on any other system in this environment, just instantly quarantine that machine, right, to stop the bleeding. And that was incredibly useful for us because we did uncover a couple other systems where the attacker had already begun the, the process. They were, they were starting to take the steps that they were taking leading up to the ransomware. And boom, those rules kicked in, isolated those systems, the attacker loses access to them. And so we were able to prevent further damage uh, being done, right? Now that's, you know, you're not always that lucky, but it's it's having technology that enables us that if we do parachute in at the opportune moment, do I have the tools that would allow me to move at the speed of the attacker, right? Because your traditional kind of IR toolkit, it's you're doing autopsies, right? You're coming in after the damage is done. And even if you do find yourself in the middle of it, your tools might not have the capabilities of the real-time telemetry streaming the DNR, you know, detection response and, and actual take action capabilities um, uh, that 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 we have now, and so that's that was a major win for us very recently, actually. Super cool. And I would assume for somebody building products and building services on top of the uh, of the SecOps cloud platform, having the ability to do things in real time must be critical. Absolutely. The fact that you guys built this API first platform. Um, right enables us to there's no limit to what we can do um, and we can do everything in real time right so we interrogate systems in real time to populate inventory databases right Um, so that at any moment we know all software packages all services everything on the system um, and that's a simple api call away to populate that data into our application that our analysts use but also our customers use, right which is a really interesting thing by the way you know because of all the capabilities of the platform there's no limit other than your imagination on what to do with that data, right? So it's not just a security tool anymore, right? Because there are so many things that an IT team could benefit from that those APIs expose. So we built that functionality into our customer facing application because most of my customers are IT teams, right? They don't, they don't care about all the cool SOAR and, and EDR and stuff that we're using on the back end. They want simpler things that help make their job easier. And so we provide that data to them in the application because of all the API, the APIs that are exposed that we can we can grab that data. Um, so absolutely, it, it's it's kind of a dream come true for a product builder in any facet of sort of IT or security. Yeah, because I mean, 
what else do you have the option of, right? You have, okay, I'm, I'm going to buy and deploy an asset management software. I'm going to buy and deploy an EDR. I'm going to buy and deploy um, uh, something to ship logs. I'm going to do this and this and this and this. Now you have five endpoint <laughs> agents on a device. Y- yes. That if there was an open API, you probably could have done it all in one thing. Um, and, and Amanda, Amanda just hit the silver bullet. The, the golden issue of our, of our industry is agent is a four dollar work, right? Customers do not like having multiple <laughs> agents on their systems, even, even their own agents. But then as a service provider, I'm coming in to drop yet another agent, right? And so any opportunity you can find to consolidate that functionality, get it all into one if you can, right? Now, not to say we're going to get rid of every agent that exists, but we, we've come very close, right? We, we need very little that, that outside of what Lima Charlie can provide, SecOps Cloud Platform can provide. It, it, it's covering things like RMM and, and CMDB and asset management. On top of its obviously core functionality of being a really solid EDR agent, and 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 the ability for you for for any customer to be able to build something on top and and configure it the way it makes sense for them. Like my understanding is that when it comes to the enterprise environment, for example, yes, you can like you can still make things work by deploying a bunch of different tools and then stitching them together with a SOAR platform or something similar. But when you're building a product or you're building your own offering, you can't build it on top of a, a traditional EDR or on top of a traditional asset management solution, right? That's right. You, the last thing you want to do as a product builder is build a product on top of other products, right? Because now you're you're at someone else's mercy, you know, the license model, the the the, the billing, the price, the, the, the cost of that other product, right? I would much, much rather as a builder build on top of an abstract sort of agnostic uh, service layer, right? That, that you know, the, the only business that that, Companies in think AWS, for instance, they're just there to provide infrastructure, right? I'm not, I'm not paying them license fees to use additional capabilities that they could take away at any given point in time, and I'm, I, and I'm not, you know, my success is not tied necessarily to their success because at the end of the day, AWS is just a neutral sort of service provider. Um, they'll always be providing EC2 instances, right? And so, yeah, as a as a product builder, you know, there's there's a lot of reasons why you don't want to have those external dependencies if you can avoid it. What uh, I'm curious for for a security vendor, what are some of the ways in which uh, the SecOps cloud platform shortens the time to market, and like what's what's the significance of using it to get the, the new ideas to the market quickly? Amanda, if you want um, to take a stab, I, I, it's kind of a repeat of my last answer, almost right. Um, but it's, you have less management interfaces to work with, less um, wow. uh, salespeople to deal with, less. Uh, software to deploy. Uh, there's less learning curves. There's just less of everything when you don't have to rely on five different pieces of technology to do the same thing. Uh, for, uh, I'm curious, Amanda, for, <laughs> from from Blumira's standpoint, and again, as much as you can share publicly on the call, uh, h- how long it- did it take? From the beginning of, like, from from the moment uh, Lima Charlie uh, and and the SecOps uh, Cloud Platform we offer was chosen as a way that f- for for Blumira to leverage it for what you were building to the moment when you had something live in production. Sure, and I actually remember the first call I was on that they mentioned Lima mm-hmm. Charlie. I was waiting to get at an airport, mm-hmm. and I stopped at like a gas station to take a conference call, um, and that was in. Mid December, I believe, maybe in mid November, and uh, that was just us talking about it, right? No contracts had been signed, and no, I mean, we looked at some documentation, right? There was a, there was a lot, um, and we were able to, uh, with only a handful of people, build a full immigration with our product in three months, three and a half months, something like that. Um, and yeah, it was, I mean, we're not offering everything right yet because that's a very small amount of time to offer everything that you guys have, you know, capability for. Um, but just the fact that we were able to do the things that we wanted to do so quickly, um, one is like a testament to like how you built that API. Also, uh, documentation, great job. (laughs) Your guys' documentation, top notch. Thank you. 
Yeah. Awesome. Uh, to wrap up the discussion, one last question. Uh, what is the one secret or a piece of advice you would like to share with practitioners and, and people in the industry thinking about building their own startups, uh, whether it's a product or a service? And the advice that I would give is, is, you know, there's, there's, there's plenty of room. There's, there's plenty of opportunity out here in this space. I mean, it's, it's, there's so many organizations that need this level of service that traditionally or historically have not been able to afford it, didn't know it was out there. Um, and with, with the, 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 you know, deployment of something like the security op, security ops pub, uh, public cloud, like it, it's never been more accessible. I mean, cause I'll say years ago, it was not an easy thing to get an MSSP or India yeah. off the ground. A lot of elbow grease, a lot of hard work. You had to really, you know, master many different tool sets to be able to just simply be ready to deliver the service. Uh, now that 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 bar couldn't be lower because you can turn on Lima Charlie, you can turn turn this on, start deploying agents right away. Already have a production rule set, you know, uh, running in the background, and now you're just fine tuning it, right? And you're not you're not having to worry about infrastructure, you're not having to worry about operations, you're not having to maintain and troubleshoot, you know, endpoint agents. You're just focusing on the customer's experience and, and finding, and you're paying, right? and you're and paying so, for what you use. So you don't need to meet the minimum, the minimum right. spend. You don't have to negotiate a five-year long contract and predict, like forecast your own capacity. You say, hey, maybe, maybe in 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 July, by the time we launch, we will have uh, twenty-five endpoints, and that's still okay. You can start your business and scale from that's there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, because like one of the issues that I faced when I was getting recon off the ground was making that decision of what you know, are we going to be an alien vault shop? Are we going to be a Splunk shop? Are we going to be you know an open search or elastic search at the time? You know, and, and weighing all the different pros and cons and the costs and the the the, the advantages. And um, that's you know we went with the open source because for instance you, you take a look at you know I will I won't name vendors, but one of the the big name kind of scene vendors that targets MSSPs, you know the 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 pay to play just to begin with them is a very high, very high number to hit. And you're like, but I'm just getting started. How do I, how do I justify that expense just to get my very first small customer on board? I, you know, I'd be losing money every month until I brought on three, four, five more customers. So the, it's a game changer to be able to pay, you know, pay as you go. So if you start and you've got a customer, like you said, with 15 endpoints, you can deliver that service. You know, uh, obviously you're going to want to grow, but, but you can deliver that service. You won't be losing money doing it. Um, and it grows with you. And that that's the greatest thing I think that's happened to, you know, entrepreneurs looking to start this sort of a, a business. Yeah. And I say, just don't be, don't be afraid of all of the change. It's definitely going to happen. Um, you know, when you're in a startup, uh, constant change, you know, when you, you have to expect that if you are using open source products, that at some point, you're probably going to have to find an actual solution for that. Um, so just keeping that in mind, I think you don't necessarily have to do a long-term plan or anything around every specific use case. Um, but, you know, rolling with the punches and kind yeah. of just accepting the fact that every day is going to be a new day uh, until you, you know, get bought out. basically, Or, or become, or you become until you make whatever. it and become big. Not, yes. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's just uh, a wild west of a um, whole bunch of people trying to do great things. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you so much, Eric. It's been a great conversation and definitely looking forward to seeing what we can do together in, in the future and how the SecOps cloud platform can be leveraged by other builders and other practitioners looking to start their own businesses or scale their own businesses, in fact. Thank you. Right.